Okay, this is going to start our trig section, which should be a review of stuff that you've done before. Um, still has to do with how things are related, but it's not it's not restricted to the 30, 60, 90, or the 45, 45, 90. So we know things like the sign of something, and that's abbreviated S-I-N. The sign is always associated with opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Cosine, abbreviated COS, is adjacent over hypotenuse in the tangent T-A-N is associated with opposite over adjacent. Okay, now we did, to help you remember it, remember that Sokotoa? Sokotoa? Oh, yeah. You have a hurt toe. Sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. That needs to be memorized. Okay? Now, eventually, there's three other ones that are the inverses of these. We're not going to deal with them in geometry. The inverse of this is your cosecant, the inverse of this is a secant, and the inverse of this is a cotangent. But we're not going to worry about that, but you will get to that in pre cal if you take pre cal. Okay, um, so if I have a triangle, now this is always in a right triangle. I have to have a right triangle to be able to do that. So let's say I've got this right triangle and I've got four, three, and five. Okay, those are my measurements. A, B, C. This is all about where you are on the triangle. So let's say I'm trying to find the sign of angle A. Well, when I say the sine of angle A, that means I'm shrinking myself down and I'm standing right there. Now, that's huge because all of this is based on perspective of where you are on the triangle. So, you've got, if I'm standing right here and I want to know what the sine is, then I'm going, okay, what's the opposite? Now, the only thing that doesn't change on perspective is hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the same no matter where you are on this triangle. So what's the measurement of the opposite side if I'm standing right here? What's the measure of the opposite side? Three? Three. So the sine of angle A would be three over five. Okay. What would be the cosine of angle A? Um. Four over five. Four over five. Now, if I'm talking adjacent, remember my hypotenuse doesn't change. What changes is what's opposite and what's adjacent. Adjacent means I can reach out and touch it. If I'm standing right here, I can touch that side right there. Okay? Opposite would be that side. I can't touch it. So what would the tangent of angle A be? Three over four. Okay. Because Opposite over adjacent. Oh, okay. I get okay. you. Okay. Now, I'm going to run over to C because I never find my trig functions of a right angle. Okay. They never ask me for a 90 degree angle. Okay. Because how would you know what opposite would be? Okay, you have no perspective there. So it's only ever going to be this or this. It's never going to be your 90 degree angle. So let's say I want to know the sine of angle C. What is it? 4 over 5. Perfect. Okay, what's the cosine of angle C? 3 over 5. Good. And what would the tangent of angle C be? Um, 4 over 3. Perfect. Okay? Y'all remember doing this? Sort it out and see what you can do. Okay, now obviously you can get decimal values for these as well. Okay, you can move it either way. Okay, um, you can do 
on your calculator. Let's say they asked you what the cosine of 39 degrees is. Pick up your calculator. The first thing you need to do, though, is check to make sure your mode is in degrees. Okay, if it's in radians, it's going to mess you up. Everybody have it in degrees? Mine says normal. No, keep going down. Go down, go down. Yeah, yours is in degrees. Okay. Oh. Rebecca, yours is in mm -hmm. degrees. Okay, tell me what the cosine of 39 degrees is. Round it to four places. How would I, would I use what you... Hit it on the calculator, cosine 39, and then hit enter. Oh! Oh, okay. Okay. Hit cosine 39. Yes. And what is it? Uh, point seven, seven. Four places. Seven, one. Okay. So that would be it. That's the cosine of 39 degrees. Okay. Um, you're going to use this for word problems. Okay. And we're also going to use it for something else. But um, here's an example of a word problem. I'm going to leave that up there. Just coming back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dakota is standing on the ground, 97 yards from the base of a cliff. Okay, here's the cliff. He's standing over here, and this is 97 yards. Okay, this is my cliff over here. Um, let's see what else it says. Okay, um, using a theater dot light, which is a surveyor thing, okay? He noted that the angle formed by the ground in the line of sight to the top of the cliff was 56 degrees. Okay. Find the height of the cliff to the nearest yard. So I'm looking for that. Okay. I cannot use special case triangles. I don't have a 30, 60, 90. I don't have a 45, 45, 90. All I have is this. Now, if I'm standing right there, I'm looking at opposite and adjacent, right? Because I want to know opposite and I have adjacent. Which one of those does opposite and adjacent? Mm -hmm. The tangent. So I go, the tangent of 56 degrees equals opposite, which is x, over adjacent, which is 97. Rebecca, when you hear that, tell me because I forgot to set my timer. Okay, so when you hear it, click. Okay. All right. Can I solve for x? Um, sure. How? You would... How do I get rid of that 97? Divide. Time. Which is it? Oh, the, this is back algebra 1 uh, stuff. The divide. It's already dividing. Multiply. Multiply. If I'm dividing here to get rid of something, I would have to multiply. So that leaves me my x by itself, which would be the height of the cliff. So then I take my calculator and I go nine. After I get out of that, I go 97 times the tangent of 56, and it gives me 143.8. And I'm going to assume it's in yards because the other side was in yards, and I have my answer for the height of the cliff. Okay, you see how you use trig. Yeah. I love trig. I think trig is very practical. I think it's, you know, relatively easy. Once you memorize that, you got it. Okay? Now, there's also a way to find angles. Okay? And I'm actually going to, let's pretend we don't know any angles. And what the original problem gave me, and I'll just make it up here. Okay, let's go ahead and round that 144 yards. Okay? Let's say that we know those. And I go, I want to know what this angle right there is. Okay. Anytime I'm trying to find an angle, I'm going to be using on my calculator something called inverse. Okay, inverse is above. If you look at your sine, your cosine, your tangent, it's little things above it, okay, where it says sine to the negative first power, or cosine to the negative first. Okay, so I'm standing here, but I want to be standing there because that's the angle that I'm interested in. 
Okay, so if I'm standing there, my perspective is this is opposite and this is adjacent, right? So what uses opposite and adjacent? Tangent. Tangent. Okay, so let's call that A. So the sine of angle A is equal to, oh wait, it's not the sine. The tangent of angle A is equal to opposite, which is 97, over adjacent, which is 144. Well, I need to know what angle A is, which means I kind of got to get rid of the tangent, if you will, which means I would divide by the tangent. But the same concept of dividing is taking it to the negative first power. Okay, because remember the negative one puts it on the bottom. So do inverse tangent of 97 divided by 144 and tell me what you get. Uh, 33.96. Okay, so if I was going to round that, it would round to 34 degrees. So that would be my degree. Anytime I'm trying to find an angle or a degree, I'm going to use inverse. Okay? <laughs> you just got to remember to use that. But it's still all related to this. Um, now, they're going to put it on a coordinate plane. Of course. Well. Of course they are. Okay? Still using all this. Okay, let's say I want to find the measurement of angle A, and it tells me that A is at 1, 2, B is at 6, 2, and C is at 5, 4. I'm guessing that's my right angle. Okay, it looks logically. So I'm standing right here. Now, how am I going to use this to be able to find what my angle is? How am I going to find the distance from here to here? I could use the distance formula. I don't have to because that's a horizontal line. So I can just count. From 1 to 6 is what? 1 to 6. One, two, six. One, two, six is five. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's five. Neither one of them are negative. Okay, now, but I can use my distance formula. If I plug this into my distance formula and this into my distance formula, I'm going to get five. Okay. okay. I have to use the distance formula on these two. Okay, I don't have a choice because it's not horizontal and not vertical. I don't even know if I have the distance yet. Either. Okay, so when I plug it in here, I have five, four, and six, two, and I'm going to get approximately 2.24 here, okay? Now that's only part of it. Remember, I'm trying to find what the angle is. So if I'm standing here, I've got opposite, don't I? What else do I have? Um, adjacent. Mm -hmm. Adjacent would be right here. I have the side opposite the 90 degree angle. I have the hypotenuse. So what uses opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. The sine. So the sine of angle A is equal to 2.24 over 5. How am I going to find out what the angle A is? Times multiply. Multiply what? Oh, um, I don't know. Rebecca? I gotta do the inverse. I'm oh. trying to find an angle. Anytime I do an angle, I've got to use the inverse. You can look at it as like you're multiplying the sine times angle A. That's not really what you're doing, but you can look at it that way. So I would need to divide by the sine, but I can't do that. All I can do is go the sine to the negative first, which is like putting it on the bottom of 2.24 over 5. All right, do that on your calculator. Oh, I just went, I guess I was like scratching on chalkboard. Do, so you're going to do the inverse sine of 2.24 over 5. 
26.61. Okay, so we'll call it 27, just rounding it, depending on where they tell me to round it. If I know this one, I can know this one. I don't have to use true to find that one. Because I've got a 90, I've got a 27. Together they're going to equal 180. So this is going to give me a 53 right here. Okay? Because I'm going to subtract that from 180. Does that make sense? If I know two of them, I immediately get the third one. All right. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, that's all there is to it. That's, that's it. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you one to try. Okay? One like this to try. Okay, you're going to find the measurement of angle X, and this is going to be a right triangle, obviously, and these are the coordinates. I think it might tell me, let's see, does it tell you what the, well, I think you can figure out what the right, the right angle is Y, but I think you can figure that out when you draw it. Use your calculator with the distance formula unless you particularly want to use it. Mm -hmm. It's going to tell you where to round it to. It might say to the nearest degree, which means round it to the ones place. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. I'm going to give you your homework. Um, and you might have a quiz on this tomorrow. Okay. So page 368 and 369. 18 through 50, even, and then I also want you to do